lots of norms, there are lots of conventions, and you tend to see people do the things just the same way because their coach told them that way and they tell their students that way. And These are purposely generic to inspire creativity, to leave it open for students to do even more amazing work. And, and I, I kind of get angry when judges say, oh, you can't do that, you can't. The American Forensic Association doesn't say you can't do this or that. Your coach may say that, you can argue with them. But this is pretty clear. 10 minutes is a rule. You've got to have a manuscript. It doesn't say a little black binder. It just says a manuscript, whatever form that's in. And it can't be poetry, and it can't be drama. Those are the rules. But after that, it's all interpretation. And again, some, some schools and individuals are, are just way more um, creative in what they do with that. Uh, what, what else can we talk about here? That analysis stuff that I was talking about, I've given you a, a list of questions. Really answer those questions. And if you have a piece where multiple characters are talking about, like if we were talking about that piece, he certainly talks in the first person a lot, but she also talks. And so when you do these, this character analysis that I'm asking you to do, don't only do it for the main character, but for all of the characters. Try to make them as real in your mind as possible. Look to the text for that evidence of what kind of person they are, what their feelings are, or whatever. And sometimes it's, it's just not there. And I've had students, and, and they come up with this on their own, if, it's, if the literature itself is, is absent of necessary background information, they create it. They'll create it in their mind. They create a backstory to this character. Uh, right down to things like, what's their favorite food? What's their favorite color? What kind of pocketbook would she carry? Just to try to make this character real, so that it's not abstract words on a page, but there's a human being here who speaks, and um, so sometimes you can even create your own backstory. Hey, how are you doing? Are you here for prose? We're still doing prose, but if you're here for after dinner speaking, we're doing that soon. You don't have to leave. I'll be back. Okay, I'll be here. <laughs> I didn't mean to scare her away. I didn't. So, so really, don't don't try to rush it. I mean, at a certain point, you got to get something up and run it. Okay, I got to a tournament. But this analysis stuff, keep working on it. Go over these questions. Um, you know, what does this character want? People act on the basis of motives. They want something. You, you're here today because you want something. We don't just do things randomly. There's something we're trying to get. The characters in your prose piece are, are the same way. Think about what do they want, because what they want is going to define how they act. What does he want in the beginning of that piece? I mean, what does he want from her? He wants her to be his girlfriend. He doesn't want to be the comforter. He wants to be the guy with the musk. Uh, and, and, and when you know that that character, that's what he wants, he's going to act a certain way. I mean, there's a certain behaviors that follow from that desire and every character has motivations and desire. Really think about that. I think one of the things that he also does wonderfully in his performance is the pausing. Out of that 10 minutes, he's probably only speaking for about seven. There's lots of space in there. And when you've got that script in front of you, especially prose, where it's just one line every other one word, it's easy to have it come too fast. Remember that these are people talking. And just as I'm speaking now, the words don't keep coming in a steady flow. I have to take little pauses where I think about what I'm going to say next. We think a thought, and then we express it. And your characters that you're bringing to life for us in your performance should have that same quality. It makes them much more believable. You know what they're going to say because you have the script in front of you. But let us see them think that thought that would get them to say that. See that happen non-verbally, and and then hear the line. So you know you can punctuate your the, the rhythm of the piece with things like pauses and and increases and decreases in volume. Unfortunately, when he decreases his volume, we couldn't hear it. But in your typical performance room, hopefully that won't be an issue. But it can be. You've got to be careful when you decrease that volume. You still have to project loud enough for the judge in the back of the room to hear.
near you. So these are all the things that you're going to learn. Find yourself some literature. Read it out loud, time it, see what you've got to cut. And, and, and try to put down on paper, put as much down on paper as you can because it just makes it more real rather than just fleeting thoughts. You know, what does this mean? What's the message of this piece? What do I learn from reading this piece of literature? And now you're starting to think about that argument or that theme for your introduction. And from there, you can start to cut it, and all of a sudden, it, it takes shape. Um, even the way you put it into the book is important because you're going to have page turns. And so you can use your page turns to show change of scene, passage of time. You don't want to have a page turn in, in mid-sentence, usually. Like, and then he said, what should I do? Um, you, you can kind of set it up. There might only be 15 seconds of, of words on a page, and then we go to the next page. So you, you're, you're kind of using the, the book and the page turns to punctuate or break up the scene. and. Just lots of creative things. Uh, it's limitless what you can do. And the, and the last, the last uh, step in, in, the, in the process that I laid out for you in the handout, I, and I hope that's helpful. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm easily contacted. But, and it's just like, am I done yet? Am I ever done? I know you're thinking that right about now. Please, are you ever done? Like, just shut up. We got the idea. It's pros. If nationals aren't over, no, you're not. If you're still doing the same piece in March as you were in, in October, and I don't mean the same piece of literature, but if you're still doing the same performance, you have the worst part of it. You should not be doing the same performance in, in March or April as you are in October, because it should evolve. Your knowledge should get deeper of these characters, and you should be able to bring it to life even better for your audience. And ultimately, that's what that's what oral interpretation is. You get words on a page, and your body and your voice become the, the channel, the conduit, to bring that to life for your audience. They don't see those words, you do. All they see is what you do with your body, your face, and they hear what you do with your voice. And you, and you bring it to life, that's what interpretation is. So, uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch. Uh, you do have the link to that webpage. I, I really encourage you to go look at all of those interpieces. They're just some wonderful performances. And 